What's going on everybody? It's your boy Jay Ming back checking in with the people back with another review and today of course we talking that HBO's The Last of Us episode 6. This episode is titled Ken. Now we start this episode three or so months later we know that it's a, it's a change in season because there's snow everywhere all over the ground and we actually get introduced to a couple new characters right off the bat. It doesn't start with Joel and Ellie but an older couple. Older gentleman he comes in the house look like he came from hunting and he's he walks into the home and the older lady is sitting in a chair and she kind of like gives him that that look like yo there's there's somebody else in this house and we later learn that that somebody else is actually joel now he has a gun and he's like you know talking to the man like listen put your gun down i just want to know where my brother is clearly joel and ellie are looking for tommy at this point they're traveling to of course meet up with the fireflies eventually but they're getting closer to where joel feel like tommy is and so he's just trying to get some more information about just his whereabouts now this older couple is actually funny as hell and they have like a few interactions with joel ellie eventually joins the scene she also has a gun and you know they're kind of like having that uh that interrogation moment and if you played the games you know joel's style with his interrogation where he'll ask one person uh, uh, some information and then the other person has to say the same information or it's going to be some problems <laughs> and they and they don't know of course what each other said so it was funny just seeing that interaction play out with this older couple and we eventually learned that this older couple has been here for a while they they telling joe like listen it's crazy out there and if you plan on going west like we don't know of much people that are out there that are alive like we we go over there and there's dead bodies everywhere and it's dangerous it's dangerous over there but in joel's head he's like yo we gotta we gotta head that way because that's where we need to go and so joel kind of has this concerned look on his face ellie she ain't really she's like listen y'all ain't gonna scare us but the older couple's like look we, we look like we got to him they eventually leave and you know they head on their journey but joel is actually stopped by some chest pain that he's having so it looks like you know some health conditions are, are catching up to him maybe a little bit of anxiety going on where he has to stop and take a break holding his chest and ellie thinks he's like dying or whatever but you know he's just telling her like listen i'm all right it's just the cold air clearly lying but experiencing some health problems and you know it's, it's a little bit concerning so as they continue on their journey um it becomes nighttime and they setting up camp and ellie begins to ask joel like after all of this what's next for you you know what i'm saying like after you bring me to the fireflies and they create the cure the world is saved what do you plan on doing next and he's like i never really thought about it but i would like to like you know live out on a farm with some sheep like you know what i'm saying somewhere quiet and, and peaceful and then he's asking her what she would want to do and she's like you know i want to be pretty much like an astronaut she wants to explore the outer space and go to the moon something like that and that's something that she was like fascinated with back at the quarantine zone she read a lot of books on people that you know learned more about exploration in outer space and being so confined to those walls in the quarantine zone she just wants to get out there and explore and joel pretty much says he's gonna take over watch for both of them and fast forward to the next morning joel is knocked out having a nightmare drooling and he he, he wakes up from like a nightmare and um he reached for his gun and it's not there so immediately he thinks it's, it's, it's bad like something somebody stole his gun maybe they're being held hostage at this point uh nonetheless ellie has his gun and she's like you fell asleep i let you sleep i watched us and he's he's getting mad at her for doing that but she's like yo you fell asleep like if you are so concerned about our well-being then don't fall asleep and she kind of had a point so joel and ellie come across a bridge now this bridge there's nobody around but you see joel and ellie like hiding in the trees and in the bushes and then it looks like joel sets off some shots and it seems like he's trying to make some noise that way maybe if like any infected all around or if there's any animals hiding that they won't be like ambushed and caught off guard but after those shots go off there's nobody around and that's actually something i noticed about this show like during their travels and when they're you know doing those moments where they're traveling from one area to the next it's nobody around in this show like there is no infected there's no animals like there's nothing and i'm i'm like I don't like that about this show like where is the infected the infected only seem to be in places where there's something like big happening in the episode and i know it's not like i said it's not a one-to-one -one representation of everything that happens in the show but the infected are a major part of this game of this story of this franchise of this show 
And I feel like they are not, you know, putting a lot of emphasis on the infected being in this world. So as they continue on their journey, Joel and Ellie actually come across a group of people on horses. They surround them. They got guns drawn. They asking them, what are they doing out here? Like, what is their business? And Joel is like, you know, I'm looking for my brother. And they asked him, like, are you infected? And if you lie to us, this dog is going to sniff you out. And if, if you are infected, it's going to shred you to pieces. So now we know, like, Ellie, she has been bitten. But Joel, he's good. So when the dog approaches Joel, you know, it's fine. But as the dog starts to approach Ellie, she has, like, this nervous look on his face. Joel is nervous at the same time. We all know Ellie has been bitten. So the dog approaches. He's dog is growling at Ellie. And as the dog gets closer, it eventually just starts playing with Ellie and licking, licking her face. Lady approaches from the group. She is asking, what is the guy's name? What's Joel's name? He gives her a name and they actually bring them back to the settlement. And we later learn that this settlement is actually Jackson, a beautiful recreation of the Jackson settlement within the game. They eventually offer Joel and Ellie some food. So now they're in the cafeteria. It's the lady that brought Joel and Ellie to the settlement, Tommy, Joel, and Ellie. And, you know, it's actually funny because, like, Ellie, <laughs> Ellie's eating and Joel, too, and they're, like, tearing the food up. I mean, they go into town. And uh, there's this one girl, like, standing back, hiding behind, like, a pillar. And she's, like, looking over at uh, Joel and Ellie as they're eating. And Ellie's like, what? Like, like, what are you staring at? Easter egg. You might recognize who that young lady is. I'm not going to say who it is because I think that's a spoiler. So they're all chopping it up as they eat, you know, getting to know more about each other and uh, Tommy is, you know, talking with Joel and Joel's like, you know, it's nice to know that she brought us here, but you know, can we get some alone time for family? And Tommy's explaining to Joel like, yo, she is family. And we learned that this is Maria, Tommy's wife. Now it might throw you off if you played the game because Tommy's wife in the game is white. This is a black woman. And I, you know, I had said my piece about how I felt about when shows race swap characters. I ain't going front. They two for two. <laughs> they two for two with the swaps. Like the actors and the actresses that they have portraying these characters that they swap, they've been knocking it out the park. The girl that played Sarah did a fantastic job. And the lady that plays Maria here, again, did a great job as these characters. As they, you know, go walking around and they, they're showing Joel and Ellie the, the settlement and, you know, just learning again more about each other. They, uh, they kind of split up. Joel and Tommy, they go off, um, just to talk more. And Ellie and Maria, they go together. She says she's going to give Ellie a shower, some change of clothes and stuff like that. Girl stuff. Joel and Tommy are at the bar talking. And Tommy's asking Joel, like, you know, what's up with Tess? Like, who's this girl? And Joel straight up lies to him. You know, he's like, Tess is all right. Oh, he, he says Ellie's like this big wig's daughter that he got paid to, uh, to bring to family. Straight up lying. Joel begins to ask Tommy, like, you know, have you heard about the Fireflies? Like, where is the last location you known that they are? And Tommy's like, you know, I heard they have a base at the University of Colorado. And Joel then explains he wants Tommy to take Ellie to the Fireflies. But Tommy's like, he can't go. He eventually explains to Joel that he's going to be a father, that Maria is pregnant. He explained to Joel that, you know, these are good people. Uh, Maria and her people, they brought me in. Jackson is a nice settlement. We all got to pitch in and do our part. And we're all like, they're good people. And Joel and Tommy are like arguing because Joel is almost feeling like, so what are you saying? Like, I'm a bad person. And they're talking about their past and how they had to do bad things. And Tommy's like, they weren't just bad things. Like we murdered people. And Joel's explaining to him, like, we had to do that for survival. So Joel storms out of there and, uh, you know, he steps outside and he actually begins to start having those chest pains again. And in the midst of all of this, he actually starts hallucinating, thinking that he sees his daughter. The scene switches over to Ellie. She's actually been taking a shower, got to change the clothes. Another Easter egg here, if you recognize, that's the outfit that Ellie was wearing in the game. Maria leaves a note on the bed that Ellie, uh, you know, after she comes out the shower into the room, that she's like next door. So Ellie, you know, goes over next door to where Maria is, but nobody's there. So she walks in, she's kind of snooping around and she sees like, um, like a memorial of two names. And it's like a birth date and a death date. One is Kevin and one is Sarah. But Maria offers to cut Ellie's hair and uh, you know, they get to talking as well. And Ellie ends up learning that Kevin is Maria's son. And of course, Sarah is Joel's daughter. Now this is Ellie's first time learning about Joel's daughter. So she says like, it kind of explains why he is the way he is. Maria's kind of like not trusting Joel because of the story she's heard from Tommy about what they did in the past. 
And Ellie's like sticking up for him. She's like, you know, Joel ain't a bad person. He did bad things in the past, but he's not like that no more. He's not killing innocent people. And Ellie's like sticking up for Joel and she's witty with her mouth. <laughs> like I thought Bella Ramsey actually did a fantastic job in these last two episodes as Ellie. Like she's really killing the young Ellie role. Maria takes Ellie to like this community night that they have and they're watching movies. Um, and it, it just like Ellie's kind of like looking around, but I can only imagine that she's probably like a little bit confused by all of this. Like this is something that she didn't probably get to experience back at the quarantine zone where all of this community, all these people coming together, kids watching movies, eating popcorn, like this family oriented, um, you know, place is something new for her. So Tommy ends up going out and looking for Joel and he ends up finding them in a repair shop. Joel's like working on trying to fix his boots. Of course, they've been worn down over the months that they've been traveling. So Tommy walks in, he gives Joel a brand new pair of boots and apologizes to him about, you know, the argument that they had earlier. Now, Joel is asking Tommy about how dangerous it is to travel from here to the University of Colorado where the Fireflies are. You know, Tommy is like, you know, I had a few guys go that way. They came back. Nothing that you can't handle. Joel ends up like confessing the truth about everything that has been happening from you know Tess being bit from Ellie being immune to the infection and his role in taking her to the fireflies and you know Joel talks about how he's like afraid and he's weak these days and how Ellie even had to save his life a few times meanwhile back in the day he would have been able to handle it it's just all weighing down on him he's having these chest pains and it's like it's, it's really getting to him and he actually starts crying in the show it actually brought an interesting thought to my mind of how I felt about Pedro Pascal as Joel in the beginning of the show versus now. Like, I felt like he started off strong. But then as the episodes go on, I'm like, this is a different Joel. And it's because it is a different Joel. Like, I feel like he's more softer in this show than he was in the game. Like, like I said, he's been through a lot, but he didn't wear it as much as he's wearing it now in this show. Now, some people may like that because it's showing them as a more vulnerable character, but that is very much different than the character that Joel is in the game. So I, I don't I don't I'm not a fan of how soft they're making them in the show just because it's also like taken away from those moments where we actually do get more of the action set pieces and it's making him look like more he's like deterring or these moments where he's not you know performing like i would expect joel to perform and that's one thing that i i am a stand on as far as you know when they do things different from the game and the show i feel like the main characters and the main storyline should be reflective of what it was in the game side characters uh locations and stuff like that i'm okay with stuff like that changing up but the main stuff i feel like you have to nail that so um you know he's crying to tommy explaining to tommy the situation and tommy's like all right he'll take her um they'll leave at dawn the next morning and you know they'll they'll go on about their way and joel's you know he's relieved because he feels like he can't do it joel eventually makes it to the home that maria and tommy gave them for the night and he comes across ellie and Ellie actually overheard the whole damn conversation that Tommy and Joel was having. So she knows that Joel plans on giving her over to Tommy to take her the rest of the way. And Joel um, is explaining to her like, this is the safest way you'll leave at dawn. And Ellie's upset because for her, she seems like everybody that she cares or loves ends up dying or leaving her, including Joel now because they've built this relationship up and now it seems like he's giving her off to another person. She's like, I'm not Sarah. And Joel's like, wait, what? And he, she's like, I'm not your daughter. I heard about her. And he's like, all right, relax, like chill out. <laughs> because you know what I'm saying? That's a very soft subject for him. And he's telling Ellie like, I know you're not my daughter <laughs> and I'm not your father either. Breaking the, the relationship down right there. And like, they'll go their separate ways after. Now this moment did happen in the game as well. And I felt like they left out a couple um, a couple lines that would made for a better impact, as well as they changed up how this moment happens. In the game, she actually runs away from the settlement after hearing about Joel giving her off to Tommy on a horse, and they have to chase her down, find her, and you know they have that conversation there. That was also one of my issues that I'm having with the show, is that I feel like this show being squeezed into a single season, or at least nine episodes, is creating a situation where they have to speed through a lot of these moments to get through all their information within a single season. 
And I feel like what that's doing is it's cutting out a lot of a good story moments or good story sections that I feel like would add to the impact of these big moments. And I can go on for days about some of these moments that I felt like they sped up. Um, and like I mentioned in uh, previous reviews and you know, everything feeling like it's happening so fast. I do like the fact that I'm watching this with my wife because she is somebody that hasn't played the game. And I'm just like constantly asking for her feedback on the show. And overall, she likes it, but she too had some of the same concerns about the infected being, you know, few and far between in the show because it's supposed to be about a post-apocalyptic uh, America, but she's, she's noticing that she's not seeing too much of the infected. Tommy comes to eventually get Ellie in the morning. They go off to the horses where, you know, they're probably gonna saddle up and be on their journey, but they find Joel there. And Joel is like, listen, I was planning on leaving, but I thought Ellie should be able to make a decision on who she wants to take her on the rest of the journey. And without a second of thinking, Ellie like throws her bags at Joel and it's like, let's go. <laughs> like she didn't waste no time. Like she was ready to go with Joel. She was not trying to go with Tommy. This is somebody she built a relationship with and she wants to continue it with him. So Tommy gives Joel and Ellie some directions on which way to go as far as getting to the University of Colorado. Tells them how long the trip would take, give them a horse and a gun, and says that they're always welcome back to Jackson if need be. Joel and Ellie continue on their journey to the University of Colorado. In the midst of this, Joel is actually teaching Ellie how to shoot a rifle along the way and I thought that was a pretty cool moment uh that they shared and Ellie learns how to shoot she she's actually pretty bad at it but Joel is like trying to teach her how to shoot better they eventually arrive at the University of Colorado but it's deserted there's not a single person there no fireflies they see a couple of the firefly logos but no fireflies in sight they come across a uh a packing list so it looks like the fireflies might have been there at one point but they packed up moved along and as they are continuing to search around they see that the fireflies had pinpointed a location on the map which was salt lake city where all the fireflies are planning to meet up at when it's all said and done so they they see like okay that's our next stop that's where we need to go to find the fireflies now as they're discovering all of this they hear a group of men outside and you can see like they're approaching joel and ellie's location they got melee weapons they look like they're looking for trouble joel and ellie they sneak out the back door to get on their horse and as they approach in the horse joel gets ambushed by one of the men and he like swings the a bat at him it ends up like breaking on the tree and joel like gets into a little bit of tussle with the guy now the guy ends up getting choked out by joel joel snaps his neck and, and kills him but joel was actually stabbed in the altercation and uh it was Part of the bat that broke when the uh, the guy swung it and it hit the tree, he ended up stabbing Joel with it. So Joel like rips it out and he's like bleeding all over the place. And Ellie's like, all right, get on the horse. We're gonna get out of here. And the men actually start chasing him. And Ellie's like shooting back at him as they escape. So they finally get to a, 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 a good enough distance where they separated from the men. And Joel looks, he looks like shit. He looks horrible. He's bleeding out. His face is turning pale and he ends up falling off of the horse. Ellie hops off of the horse and she's like screaming like, Joel, wake up, cause he's passed out. And she's scared because like, if he dies, like she's, she don't know what to do. She don't know how to protect herself. She don't know how to defend for herself. Like she, she needs Joel. He's been teaching her how to do everything ever since they've been out in this wilderness. And if he was to die at this moment, she would be lost. And that's how the episode ends. I thought Bella Ramsey did a great job as Ellie in this episode. Um. I wasn't feeling the portrayal of Joel up until this point. Like, I feel like they're making him more softer than he was in the show. And if they're going to do that, I still want to see a healthy balance of the other side of Joel that we know and love from the game. And I don't feel like we're getting enough of that. I also felt like the infected are nowhere to be found in the show. And, you know, they are a major part of the game when they're traveling across the country. They don't come across anything, anybody like they, they come across some people but no infected only infected in those big set piece moments and i'm not feeling that as well um i like the portrayal of jackson tommy maria i thought all of that was fantastic and a, a great portion of the episode just seeing a, a civilized community a settlement um taking place within this world i thought was dope we're getting to the end it's coming up nine episodes in this season we are on episode seven next week so <laughs> It's, it's still a lot to be done. And uh, like I said, it's going to be interesting how they play it out. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this episode. Of course, rate the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll catch you in my next review. Peace.